Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video guys, I'm going to be showing you the OS library. So let's get right into it. The OS library has everything to do with time. So as you can see here, time, date, you know, you can get the date, you know, it's just everything to do with the time and different stuff like that. You can get the days of the week and I'll be going into it now. Okay guys, so let's start with OS.time. OS.time returns the amount of seconds uh, that have passed since the Unix Epoch. It is the Unix time. If you guys don't know what the Unix Epoch is, well, it, it is, as I said, the amount of seconds since January 1st, 1970. So this time keeps going up every second because it is the amount of seconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. That is Unix time, the Unix epoch. I have an example for you guys. So guys, here's my example. Right here, it has the amount of seconds and it keeps going up every second. And there's the amount of seconds since January 1st, 1970. But this is UTC time. That doesn't really matter. Uh, but you can still use it to um, get times and stuff. So again, guys, OS.time would be used for things like daily rewards. Daily rewards, um, when, you, if, uh, when you collect it, it saves the OS.time stamp. And then later, it will check to see if it's greater than or less than and stuff like that. So if we print, or to do this in Roblox, you can say print OS.time, task.wait. And if you run the game, as you can see, it's running multiple times every second. But as you can see, it's going up every second. Um, and yeah, it, it is running, uh, 60 times, so it, this is running 60 times in one second, it's doing that for every, every second, and there you guys go, that is OS.time. So guys, if you want to determine the amount of seconds that have passed, you can do something like local current time, when we go to OS.time, we are, um, then going to wait five seconds, or, we're gonna... Wait, yeah, five seconds, just, you know, and then local, or, yeah, okay. So now, when we say, if current time, uh, wait, hold on, guys, let me, let me, let me, let me look at this. All right, sorry, guys, I have my uh, example, I just want to make sure I had it right, but what we're doing here is I'm getting the OS.time and this is the benchmark. I'm calling this benchmark. That is the time when we first start the game. We are waiting five seconds, which means um, OS.time after five seconds would be bigger than benchmark, right? It would be five seconds more than benchmark. So what we are doing here is we are constantly checking to see if the current time minus benchmark is greater than five, which is signaling that five seconds have passed. And if it is greater than five, we're going to put equal to uh, five seconds within a pass. So let's uh, try this out. Run the game. We're going to wait five seconds. And it should say after five seconds. And there you go. Five seconds have passed. Next, we have diff time. So like difference in time, OS.diff time. It returns the number of seconds from the first number we put into the and the second number. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, this is like just subtracting the times, if I'm being honest. So, if we have OS.time, right, that is the current time, and we add, uh, like, I think it's like 64,000 something, how many seconds in a day, let me check that. Okay, so I had the numbers mixed up, it is 86, there we go, so that's the amount of seconds in a day, and then we're going to put OS.time, this will print, if we put it in print, this will print uh, 86,400 because OS that time plus a day of seconds. So it'll just be, it'll just be that. So let me run the game. There's still my, my last example. Let me hit run. It will print 86,400. I'm not exactly sure why you need this. Just to calculate a difference in time. So, um, you may use this in daily rewards. Getting the difference in time, but you know. There's diff time for you. So next up, we have OS.date. OS.date is really, really cool because you can get the the day of the week, 
a day in the month, the 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 time it is, you know, like so much information out of this. So what we can do is again print it. So OS dot date, and in OS dot date there are specifiers. So let me show you guys that now. Um, specifiers they, they they uh, you guys can just take a look. Okay, so here are the specifiers. As you can see, like if we put percent B, that is the full month name. It's it's really cool. Um, and if we wanted the month, we could put percent M, day of the year, percent J. Um, if we wanted the full year, we would put percent Y. And on all these percentages and uppercase and lowercase letters uh, represent something about the date and stuff like that. So let's put that into use. So let's say we wanted to put the month, the day, and then the year. Well, what we would do, so this takes a string, right? String. What we would then say is we need the full month name. So we would say percent, uppercase B. We're going to put a space, so that would be February. And then we need the day, day of the month, which would be percent, lowercase d. And we're going to put a comma, because, you know, it's February, let's say. Uh, today is the 23rd, so it's a February 23rd, comma, and then we need the year, which is, I believe, percent Y. So, yeah, percent uppercase Y. Let's print this and see what we get from it. Okay, guys, so run, and there you go. It says the day that I'm recording this on is getting the date, February 23rd, 2024. Okay, guys, so let's say we wanted our time to be a little bit more advanced. Like, let's say we wanted the day of the week, you know, all that stuff in time. Well, what we would say is put it in the string, like the string format. Put percent, capital A, comma, percent, capital B, and then percent, lowercase d, uh, comma, and then we would say percent y, um, and we're going to say at percent uppercase x. When running this code, as you can see, it prints Friday, because today is a Friday, comma february 23rd 2024 and at the time i'm recording this and it's in the 24 hour uh time okay guys so the last thing i have is os.clock os.clock what it is it is a it returns the amount of cpu time used by lua in seconds and it's it is a very high precision number um probably should be used for stuff like timers and like you can see how fast something is executed this will this is what you would use os.clock for you know use for benchmarking see how fast uh slow something is ran like you can see how fast maybe one remote event is far to another so let me see if i can give you guys that example okay guys so here's the example i have in the replicated storage i mean firing a remote event don't mind this line of code because that is just so it makes it run for the player. And I'm sending in os.clock. Alright, so in our local script, I am getting the remote events. And the os.clock that we got right here is known as start clock. And so I have delta time here, which is taking the, the current os.clock and subtracting it from our start. And we are printing that delta time. So then we can see the amount of time it takes for this remote event to to fire and yeah, get executed. So if we play the game, there's our number, 0 0.2839, that that number. So, you know, it's a very short amount of time, but that's one of the things OS.clock can be used for. All right, guys, that was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you just enjoyed it, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.